So this is the awesome Black Series Luke Skywalker helmet. It's cool in that it's wearable, and it's got lights and sounds. But the paint job, I'm not so keen on. So today we're going to make it look a little bit better. Let's get to it. So I've got some references here of the actual hero prop. It has a lot more kind of patchy wear around the ears. There's a lot more blackened damage to the Rebel logo. There's a lot more wear around these kind of warning marks. And there's also some wear and dirt on the, the chin strap. So I think that all needs to be added in. And then on the back, well, probably without much reference material, I'll probably follow the same approach. And I might also add some wear. I'm assuming that this, you know, the prop in the universe would be kind of a polymer. But it might be cool to treat it as metal and put some like scratches and stuff on the back where it's been worn to really show the paint coming off. So I'll have to think about that and see how we go. But uh, yeah, I think today I'm going to start with some of the heavier blacker um, weathering effects in like the ears here. And then I'll come back with some lighter browns to put some dirt on in certain places. And then the scratches and, and other wear. So yeah. Let's get on with it. I'm going to use some acrylics. Just mix them up to a colour that I want. Which from what I can tell of the reference material, it's pretty much blackened and very splotchy right in here, which this doesn't have. It just has a black line. So I want to add some real splotchy black all around here on the chin strap. And then maybe a little bit more black splotchy up here. So this is going to be black with a little bit of brown. Right, so with my reference material handy, I'm going to put this on. And then I'm going to kind of splodge it and blotch it to kind of get the final appearance that I want. So basically I want to just probably need a little bit drier. I want to kind of splotch it in there without brush strokes if possible. A sponge would be perfect, but I'm going to come back and blotch this anyway. So I really could just like paint this on and then just create the texture I want with what I'm going to use, which is a bit of paper towel. So I'm going to, where I don't have reference, I'm just going to continue this around. I mean, it's going to get handled up around here, you'd think, going, putting it, you know, putting it on and off, so it'd be quite, expected to be quite dirty all the way around here, so that's what I'm going to continue. I think it can be a lot darker than it is. I'm going to continue all over here, just adding paint, which we will make look like dirt part of this process. So what I'm going to try and do is kind of splotch. You can see it is coming off if I really have major issues. I might, I might actually need a sponge. Ooh, looking too bad. I might need to wet it a little. I might need a little bit more water in the acrylic. But already, I'm quite happy with that. It looks grungy. It looks a bit more used. And it looks like it's got a bit more realistic wear. Because it's a bit more random. I'm going to take a bit of this off because it's probably a little bit too much without being kind of wet down. But then I'll go in and splodge. Splodge it up. subtle compare the size I think might well I mean I've done it so I'm probably biased but I think that side's already looking better so let's keep going
That is looking grungy. So what I also need to do is the chin thing, chin strap, chin guard, whatever it's called. So, so after doing the chin strap, um, I also went ahead and put this weathering on the symbology here, the Rebel logo. That was just done just with this flat brush, um, just by dabbing in a very vertical and rapid motion, just to give that kind of really speckled pattern. And then I also did the same on this front part of the helmet, and then also in these crevices in here, just to get, really make it nice and grungy. Um, again, I just splodged on this top kind of mohawk -y bit here, and then dabbed where necessary to kind of randomize the pattern a little bit, and make it a little bit less consistent. 24 hours later and the rain is still going. And the point that I also didn't get on camera is that I really don't actually like this wear. When you're putting weathering or wear on something, it has to make sense. And I don't believe that this kind of weathering makes much sense. It's not somewhere that's going to get handled. It's not a, a cavity or a crevice. But I put it on there to kind of recreate the hero prop. It does add something in that it makes it look more grungy and more dirty. But it just doesn't quite make sense if you think about it. I also added some wear around here. Probably going to continue that wear up here, even though it isn't on the hero prop. But just because it makes logical sense for it to be dirty in here, you know, any crevices are going to build up dirt. And today I'm going to continue with the grey wear over the ear bit here. And maybe some more general dirt and grime, and then probably some scratch marks. So let's continue. Alright, so new day, new paint to mix. Get some black and white. The only other thing I think I should do is really in this crevice here. I really need to put some in there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that now. Got some wear, some little dirt caught in these um, little crevices in the mohawk bit here. The last thing I do want to do is kind of put some little scratches on it. So I am going to do some kind of streaks. It's a little bit of like a basically a dry brushing technique. And I'm just going to soften some of them a little bit. Maybe up there I might do some. I wouldn't really... Like you could do this definitely with a dry brush, but my brush is soaking. So just some thin little... Yeah, that's too bad. I don't think I'm going to do any silver on the raised portions just because I think this helmet would probably, if it was, if it did actually exist, would be a, like a polymer or a plastic. I don't think it would be metal. So I don't really feel like that's in keeping with it. So I think that's probably all I'm going to do for this helmet. But I think that's significantly improved, and if nothing else, it's now one of a kind on my own. So that's a little bit of an idea on some weathering techniques in the context of helmets. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you can hear me still. I've been bucketing for days. Catch you later. Bye.